every time I've talked to anybody about Maine, there's this like, you know, original colony, New England kind of pride thing that comes out. But then there's also this, oh, for sure. you're sort of in your, your own little world up there in Maine. It's like Mainers are just different than other people. What is it about that place or that state that is so different and, and informs that, that writing in your music? I think that Maine is, is uh, an incredibly, the, both the people and the land uh, are, are extremely elemental. If like, if that is a good way to put it, like it's, it's like, it's, it's simple is not the right word for it, but like uh very raw and, and real. And I think that that both the people and the state itself in its, its landscape, it's like that feeling comes across really good, uh, really powerfully. And I think that you know, that has permeated the culture in a really intense way. And we are very proud. Like Mainers are super proud. I have a, <laughs> the friends that are in bands with other Mainers that are not from Maine. And they're like, the only thing they freaking talk about is Maine. And I don't understand. It's like, yeah, we, we really, we love it up here. It's the best. Uh, you know, I think that like the, the as far as musically goes, uh, Portland, when I was coming up, Portland was a, this incredible, tiny microcosm of really great musicians doing really interesting things. But like none of them were leaving the state. They all they all were playing in 15 different bands and living in Portland. So like there was no, you know, we didn't we didn't get like people didn't leave and go tour. Ghost kind of, you know, there are a few bands, and that's one of the things I think that set Ghost apart was we were like got in a van and we just started touring the country. Yeah. But it really created this really interesting community. And and as far as like the history of Maine music, you have this like really strong pull from the Maritimes in Canada and and once you go to Quebec and to Fredericton and stuff and and you get that pull of Irish music coming down um and that mixed uh with especially with the Acadian people with northern Maine is, is I don't know if you know much about Maine history but the Acadian people were forced out of Maine and Canada and and half of them left and half of them stayed uh and that's where you get the Cajuns and New Orleans and and so Zydeco music is is truly Acadian music. It's truly Maine music, which is really cool. So there are a lot of similarities to that kind of stuff too. So um, Maine has this really interesting kind of history of that kind of, but also at the same time presented in a very old fashioned way, I think. And yeah. I, you brought that up, the Acadian. I was going to mention mm -hmm. that. So I'm glad, I'm glad you did bring that up because to me that yeah. it is so interesting and in that the story that you just told and that information you gave us is pretty much why I started Roots Music Rambler, you know, five, six years ago, just to talk about the music that comes from different places and the people that are responsible for that type of music or, you know, continue this tradition, you know, keep the tradition alive. So I'm glad you brought that up. And I yeah, will say I have been to Maine, but for those who haven't been, what would be your first three recommendations of where to go and what to do in Maine? First three recommendations. I would say there are a lot of incredible places to go to Maine. And I think that if you went to the, like the, you know, if you went to Portland and you went to Acadia and you went to, I mean, Old Orchard Beach is probably the next most popular place in Maine. That wouldn't be on my list in any sense. Of I grew up not far from Old Orchard Beach, used to work, make pizzas on the beach down there. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like our Jersey shore for sure. Nice. You could go to those three places and have an incredible time, excuse me, but uh, you could have an incredible time. I would recommend going to the hundred mile wilderness, which is actually going to be the name of the new record. Um, but it's this, it's uh, like huge section and the North Maine woods. It's a huge section of untouched Wilderness here in the state, it's uh, it's actually the largest, I believe it's the largest contiguous forest in the United States. It's also dark sky territory, so it's like oh, the nice. best place to see the night sky in the country. And uh, I would go there. I would go uh, all the way to Eastport and Lubeck, which is across the entire state. You know, for me here, I'm like south central Maine uh, by the capital. Uh, it's about a four hour drive um, to, to the far eastern point of Maine, the most eastern point of the United States. Um, but it's right at the end of the largest tidal zone in the world, the Bay of Fundy. Mm -hmm. So you, the, the, the ocean rises and falls by like 23, 24 feet, wow. um, which is an incredible thing to see if you've never seen that. And the people out there are all really hardworking, but they all wear their hearts in the sleeve. So it's like a really wonderful place to go. And then, you know, also going up to the county to experience like what the, the mixture between, you know, New England and Mainer culture with French Canadian culture and those, those families who, you know, are bilingual and, and like what, what it's like up there. I love, I absolutely adore it up there. Chuck who drums in the band is from Fort Kent. And uh, so we, we've, I've always tried to go up there to play music and kind of just fell in love with it doing it. But I, that's what I would recommend. Very you know, good. Lake, that's kind of by the hundred mile orders. 